understanding intermediate accounting, accounting for bonds and debt instruments. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And this presentation is based on some information from a good textbook. Kiso and Wygan has been the publisher of a good intermediate accounting textbook for years, and the publisher is Wiley.com. I want to talk about bond basics, and I start off this conversation with the fact that there are two ways to raise funds to run your business. One is to issue stock or equity in which the person who's investing is an owner. The other way is to issue debt like a bond in which the other person investing is a creditor. So we have owner's equity and we have creditor's debt. This conversation is about the debt side of things. A bond is normally issued at a face amount or par and I want to flip over to Excel and talk about how a bond certificate might work on this slide that says bond basics. We have a thousand dollar bond issued by IBM, 7% coupon rate, and the bond is due in 10 years at 12-15-2019 and the owner is Bob Smith. Let's talk about the details of this bond. The face amount or principal is a thousand dollars and what that means is Bob is paying a thousand dollars almost always when the bond is issued. He's paying the face amount. And the investor Bob will receive that thousand dollars back at maturity. What I say here is what the investor receives at maturity, the thousand dollars, the original price of the bond when the bond is issued. Once the bond is issued and is sold between investors, it may trade at any price based on market supply and demand. The issuer is IBM. In exchange for getting the dollars, they issue the debt instrument. They receive the sales proceeds when it's sold. They pay interest, semi-annually in this case. The 7% is paid semi-annually, twice a year. They pay the principal amount at maturity, 12-15-2019. The interest rate is the rate paid by the issuer, and you can see that it stays the same. It's stated on the face of the certificate. And that's paid by the issuer IBM to the owner, Bob Smith. For corporate bonds, interest is normally paid twice a year, in this case June 15th and December 15th of each year until the bond matures. And then finally the maturity date, 12-15-2019. That is the day the owner, Bob Smith, is repaid the principal or face amount, and that happens at maturity. So these are the bond basics. I then want to go over and talk about uh, a bond issued at par. What we have at the top right hand corner is our same certificate. And what I've listed here at the bottom is, here's the issuer's name in blue, IBM. Here are four things that happen. And here are four journal entries that result out of these transactions. So on 12-15-09 we issue the bond at par or $1,000. We debit cash we credit bond payable a liability account. Six months later on 6-15-2010, I'm going to make a correction there, the issuer pays interest to the owner, so IBM pays Bob Smith, our investor. How much do they pay? They pay the principal amount times $1,000 times the interest rate 7%, and we divide that in half because between December and June, he has earned six months of the annual interest of 7%. For the issuer IBM, we have interest expense, a debit of $35. We pay cash as the issuer IBM of $35. That happens every six months. So step two there, transaction number two, hammers every, every six months. And finally at maturity, 12-15-2019, that issuer is going to pay interest to the owner. And we're going to multiply the principal times the interest times half a year. He's going to get the last six months of interest at maturity. And then there's another transaction, number four, in which the issuer is going to repay the principal to the owner. 
So Bob Smith, our owner, is going to be repaid the $1,000 by IBM, our issuer. With that transaction, the liability of the bond payable goes away by debiting, and Bob Smith, our investor, is returned his cash. We can go over here to see the T accounts that relate to the journal entries that we saw on the prior page. Here's the journal entries. Here are the T accounts. You can pause or rewind to see how these relate. Here's step one where we issue a bond and we come up with a liability as the issuer IBM. Steps two and three, we're recognizing interest expense as a debit, we're paying cash as a credit. And then in step four, we're paying our investor the $1,000 and we're removing the payable. So that's what happens when a bond is issued at par or $1,000. Now it's also true if we come back to the PowerPoint that after the issue date, once the bond starts trading between investors that the market price can change. So what we've seen so far is issuing a bond at par. In our next video, we're going to find out what happens when a bond is issued at something above or below par or $1,000, what we'll call a discount or a premium. That's the end of part one of our video. You'll find part two on YouTube soon. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd, STL, all one word. There's a complete list of videos on our website, stltest.net. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and chat sessions, you can go to meeting.com. You can contact us by the web, by email, or by phone. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.